Welcome to Shelby Podcast, show number 100. It's been an amazing ride for the past seven years. We wanted to do something special to commemorate that. One of my heroes in the faith is Dave Ramsey. Today we'll be talking about his amazing new book, The Legacy Journey. Financial Peace University is about waking up, then the legacy journey is about growing up. Building wealth is about stewardship. It's not about ownership. This is not about you doing something for you. This is not about some kind of a hocus pocus Christian formula so you get rich. I'm not about you getting rich. I'm about God getting rich and you managing it for him. That's what the Bible's about. Joining us today from the Dave Ramsey Ministries in Nashville, Tennessee via Skype is dynamic pastor and speaker Chris Brown. Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how your history led you into a partnership with the Dave Ramsey Ministries. Well, hey, Don, honored to be with you. I uh, graduated from Clearwater Christian College back in the year 2000, 14 years ago. And uh, man, my wife and I found ourselves neck deep in ministry, love the local church. Last seven years, I've been pastoring and love stewardship. So I've got these two passions. I've got the local church, stewardship, and I mean, this role with Dave is just the perfect intersection of both those passions. Chris, I've read the new book cover to cover and it's packed with humor, wisdom, and great stories. The thing I like most about it, though, is that every principle is backed up by scripture. So what audience is Dave trying to reach with the new book and what is the overall theme of the legacy journey? Well, Proverbs 13, 22 says that a good person leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And so if some of our resources are about waking up, this, this resource is primarily for the growing up. And so some of our some of our resources are going to be a little bit more they're going to be biblically based. And this one is more biblically centered and it's more of a Bible study type of idea. In chapter 1, Dave talks about the seven baby steps framework and the now then us them principle. Chris, can you explain those concepts briefly? So let's just take now. Now is taking control of your situation now. So that's baby steps one, two, and three, emergency fund, and getting out of debt, and then beefing up that emergency fund. Then you go into then, you're focusing on the future. You're focusing on retirement and saving for your kid's college and possibly even attacking a little bit of that mortgage. You're focusing on the future. Then you start thinking through, man, us, are my kids ready? If I'm, if I'm going to relay wealth to the next generation, do they know how to handle it? And then the fun part is the them where you're starting to focus on the needs outside of your household. And so you take care of the now, take care of the then, you take, make sure that your kids are ready for all this, and then you really can primarily focus on others. So what are the three spirits of wealth that Dave mentions in the War on Success chapter, and which one of those should a Christian be exhibiting? Now there's two that we want to avoid. One of them is pride, that we're the ones that generate wealth. We're the ones that are, are the reason for a blessing. And, of course, any mature farmer knows you can sow seed or you can work the fields, but it's ultimately God who brings the rain. So obviously we want to avoid that one. Then there's this spirit of poverty that I guess holiness is somehow synonymous with being impoverished. And of course we want to avoid that. The Bible talks a lot about that not being really what the goal is. This Gnosticism has been around for thousands of years and we really teach against that. But what we're really looking for is a spirit of gratitude that the creator, the owner of all this, channels it all through everyday people like us and to have a spirit of gratitude that we get to be a part of the process. So definitely want to avoid the first two and want to be, uh, want to make sure that we have that spirit of gratitude. Dave makes a really bold statement in the book where he says, no matter how much money you have, you will never be successful without this one thing. So Chris, what is this most powerful financial principle? Well, we've talked to people from all over the country for years now. And that person who's making, let's just say, $20,000 a year, that person is always wanting 40. And the person who's making 40 always wants 80. And the person who wants, has, makes a million dollars is always wanting 2 million. And so what we've seen through talking to millions and millions of people for years is where there's true success is when there's contentment. Contentment is that, 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 that chief financial principle that we need. Um, without that, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be chasing this, this ongoing moving target. This, this carrot's going to be dangled out there. We're not going to be content. So we definitely need to have contentment in our lives to really realize that, that, that God has decided to use everyday people like us to be a part of this. 
is not, it shouldn't be mistaken for apathy or for some kind of lack of ambition, but it's just a true peace, a true contentment. The chapter Your Work Matters talks about the importance of setting goals. So what are the five guidelines that everyone should use for goal setting? Yeah, number one is to be specific. You know, if I want to be a good dad, well, that's, what is that? I mean, I, that's not specific. So that'd be number one. Number two is it needs to be measurable. Um, it needs to have some kind of metric that you can tie to it. Uh, thirdly, it needs to be uh, in writing. You know, you got to make sure that you're accountable to it, that it keeps you inspired and challenged. You keep it in front of you. Maybe it's in your journal, on the refrigerator. Maybe it's on the mirror in your bathroom. Uh, also, it needs to be yours. You know, if my, my wife wants me to be a better dad, no, no it, it's only going to be effective if I want to be a better dad. And then lastly, it needs to have some kind of time limit. Um, do I want to be a better dad like this year or this month or like just in my overall life? Or, so we want to make sure that our goal setting actually is tangible and we can know when we hit that goal or not. Chris, could you tell us about the principles for generous giving that Dave talks about in the Call to Generosity chapter? We were made to be generous. I mean, we were made in God's image and He gave His one and only Son. So He modeled that obviously in John 3.16, but then also there's an expectation that we are to be givers. I mean, if we're to be like Christ, well, he gave a lot, you know, and he, he gave himself. Uh, also, in men generosity, when it comes to that, it needs to be fun. It needs to, that's where you get the cheerful giver um, scripture. It needs to be a fun and private process. Um, also, it's not all about money. Uh, this is more than that. It's a, it's a deeper, it's a heart issue, it's an attitude. And it stems into other areas of our life, our time and our effort and our relationships and our, and of course our money as well. And then the last one is it unlocks, it unlocks incredible, our full potential. Um, so, you know, we've been faithful with little. He can, he can trust us with much. You know, while I was reading the book, Dave must have said 50 times, God is the owner and you are the manager. So why is that concept so important in Christian finances? Donna, on Saturday nights, I sit down at my desk and I huddle my kids around. I got a 10 year old, an eight year old, and a six year old. And I huddle them around and we write our first fruits tithe check for that particular week. And we write it together and we pray over it. And the next morning, I usually give it to my oldest kid, Max. When he puts it in that bucket or that plate or whatever it depends, he doesn't feel that weight. He doesn't feel the, this tension of like, I can't release this money. And some weeks it's a big check, some weeks it's not, depending on how much we made that week. But he doesn't feel that. And the reason why is because he's just the relay person. He's the one that's taking it from what he thinks is the owner and relaying it to the kingdom. So the concept is, is he's not the owner. And of course, by now, I realize when I write that check, well, that I'm not the owner either. And so it's actually fun when we realize that God is the owner and that we are just part of the process and that he trusts us that much that we are to be his managers and his stewards of all these resources. So just from a giving perspective, that's how important it is that we realize who the owner is and who the owner isn't. I really enjoyed all the stories in the legacy journey and Dave in the last chapter talks about Clyde Eccles West. Chris, can you tell us who he was and why he was so important in Dave Ramsey's life? Yeah, Clyde is actually Dave's great, great grandfather. And he served in the Civil War at 17 years old. And uh, after the Civil War, he's released by the Army to go do whatever he wants to do. And he decided he was gonna pack up everything he, that he owned on, in two saddlebags and put them on a mule and then go from town to town. And he preached the gospel. And uh, inside those saddlebags was uh, a leather-bound Bible. And years ago, Dave found it. In this Bible, was all of his sermons that he taught from city to city. And so Clyde was a man of faith and he lived his dash well. And he passed a great legacy uh, of hard work and character and backbone and faith. And so Clyde is actually a big part of the inspiration that's behind the book. Every Christian should read The Legacy Journey by Dave Ramsey. I cannot recommend it high enough. It's packed with biblical wisdom and great stories that you will never forget. You can get your copy by visiting Dave Ramsey's website. Thanks for watching our 100th Shelby Podcast. It has truly been a labor of love, and we hope to bring you these positive stories for many years to come. Before we go, here's one last word of encouragement from Dave Ramsey. This is the legacy journey. Because remember, if you handle money God's ways while working and earning an income, the natural result of sowing that is you're going to reap wealth. When you learn to give, it unleashes things in you. 
because it creates this overflow. And it does that in your spirit as well. We're going to remember above all else that when anything else fails, generosity will win. You cannot lose being generous.